Hello everybody, welcome back to another reading. Today we're taking a look at the case of 25-year-old Leah Roberts. At least she was 25 in 2000 when she disappeared. She was last seen on March 13th, leaving a restaurant in Bellingham, Washington, where she had driven from her home in Durham, North Carolina over about four days. There have been no reported sightings of her since. And on March 18th, her car was discovered wrecked and abandoned at the bottom of a hill off of a road in nearby North Cascades National Park. It was found by a couple jogging along the Cannon Creek Road and based on the path of the car taken through the trees and the extent of damage to the vehicle, investigators determined that the Jeep had been traveling at about 40 miles per hour or about 64 kilometers per hour when it went off the road and down the slope. They found no blood or other signs of injury to an occupant inside the vehicle such as shatter of the glass or stretching of the seat belts, which made them conclude that no one had actually been inside the Jeep when it crashed but there were some sheets and things hung inside of the jeep suggesting that it may have been used as a shelter after being wrecked. Now Leah's passport, checkbook, driver's license, clothes, guitar CDs and other belongings were found scattered in the surrounding woods as well as bits of cat food and a small cat carrier because she had taken her cat B with her. Valuables such as 2500 in cash and jewelry were also left behind suggesting that a robbery was not the reason for the accident. And several years after her disappearance, police examined the car's starter motor and found that it had been tampered with, indicating that the vehicle may have been crashed there intentionally. Now, when she left Durham, she had left rent money behind and a note which suggested that she might return in a few weeks. She said that she wanted to take a road trip like that of author Jack Kerouac, whose work she admired. The note suggested that she was not intending to hurt herself and that she was quite happy or feeling adventurous. It says quite the opposite. The note also included a drawing of a Cheshire cat's grin and her cat B was also missing. She had been through a lot over the past decade. She had lost both her parents and uh, was involved in a serious car accident that resulted in a punctured lung and a shattered femur. Surgeons implanted a metal rod into her femur to help it heal. Now it was after this accident that she said that she felt born again but shortly after that her father passed away. She dropped out of North Carolina State University a semester short of graduation and her siblings recalled that she seemed lost and directionless at that point in her life. Now the author whom she admired was an author of the Beat Generation and the movement is also known as the Beatniks and the central elements of the Beatnik culture are the rejection of standard narrative values, making a spiritual quest in the exploration of American and Eastern religions the rejection of economic materialism, explicit betrayals of the human condition and experimentation with psychedelic uh, substances and uh, certain liberations and exploration. So it sounds like she was looking to make a journey perhaps for some type of deeper exploration of herself and her life. Now one thing interesting to note is that several years after she went missing they found a mummified body which also had a pin in the femur. Uh, up to this point I have not seen anybody confirming that it was her. Uh, the only information I could find about that body was that they thought it was a male and that it was a 5'6 person rather than the 5'5 five five, which Leah stood at. You would think that they would have done a DNA test by now or checked the pin itself because I also saw that each pin has its own serial number and there should be some type of registration somewhere to note who was given what pin during uh, which surgery. So if several years later they still haven't said, hey, we found her because we identified her with the pin and DNA, I have to kind of carefully conclude that perhaps that body was not her, but who knows, they might still come out with that. In any case, she has not been officially found, and that is why I was asked to do a reading on her using the tarot. We're going to start off with the tarot mucha, which is already on the table. And for any further questions, moving on to the urban tarot deck, which is this one. So as per usual, I'm just going to start shuffling the deck. As soon as I have about a table full of cards, we're going to stop and take a look. So without much further ado, let's get started.
All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, we're starting off on the top left with the Seven of Swords in reverse, followed by the Ten of Pentacles in reverse, and the Three of Wands upright. So the Ten of Pentacles strikes me as uh, feeling like some type of inheritance or something is missing. Uh, this could very well be her feeling like uh, the future that she had envisioned with her family in particular was just not to be. Like maybe she was envisioning some type of golden years that she would have liked to have witnessed. And she may have felt cheated as well because of that. And just in general, in a feeling of wanting to go away here with the Three of Wands, this seems pretty straightforward. So I feel like this is her mood uh, leading up to her departure. So feeling hard done by, uh, basically just betrayed, like I said, uh, she's thinking in this mostly because of course the swords is a uh, words and thoughts suit. And this has mostly to do with things that they probably wished for the future. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to be inheritance. Could also just be, like I said, the golden years, things that they would have liked to have learned from their parents, uh, the wisdom that they may have wanted to share, uh, moments that they felt their parents were now going to have to miss out on uh, in their own lives those types of milestones that you want to share with your parents that type of thing was missing that made her want to strike out like a catalyst for i guess the uh feelings that you probably already had beforehand then we have the ten of swords in reverse so there's a lot of drama internally as well this is justice in reverse and then we have here the queen of swords all right so the queen of swords is somebody who makes some very sharp decisions so maybe after feeling uh just kind of like this is building in the background you have to keep that in mind and we have some more dramatic thoughts here uh and uh, justice in reverse feeling like things are not just stuff like that and then we have here on the very end of the line the queen of swords who is basically going to use the sword like the sword of Damocles, i think it's what it's called to make uh, the final decisions and basically just look at things logically and say okay this is what we're gonna do and this is what we've got these are the facts and this is the decision that i've made and they probably planned this out fairly well beforehand and then they just decided to literally cut the knot she is holding a lot of uh, tape, it almost seems like ribbons or something, like she's just cut through those, like cutting through the knots, uh, cutting through decisions, that type of things. Making those final cuts, basically, to uh, go ahead and execute their plan. Then we have here the Hierophant, which is interesting. This looks like some type of religious figure, which is usually the case with the Hierophant, obviously, but um, there appears to be somebody that you may have focused on in that sort of capacity we have here the page of swords in reverse okay so we might be saying some things that aren't quite right maybe not straight up lying although she may have told a few uh half truths on the way to the exit date so to speak because of course she did have to prepare beforehand that possibly she told people that she was going to be here or there and uh just to keep them off of her tail so to speak but then we have here the three of pentacles. We're working against some people. These people are not working with us. Maybe this is also, like I said, just trying to keep people from guessing what she's going to do next to kind of work along, but also kind of not but tell them like, oh yeah, I don't know if she had a job or anything at that point. But like, oh yeah, no, I'm just going to go ahead and do this thing. Sure, I'll help you out next Monday. I'll see you then. Have a nice weekend. See you later. That type of thing. Just to keep people from suspecting that she's about to bolt. Because then maybe they'll try to pull something on her. Like maybe try to invoke some type of person whom is a Hierophant type in her life. And maybe she found another Hierophant that she was more interested in. Like perhaps she had her own person uh, basically... Um, guiding her in her thoughts like a spiritual type of guide this may be her taking inspiration from the, her favorite author i guess could be an option here just listening to what they had to say and just kind of like following our own path in the meantime we're also only really focusing on our own emotions here with the knight of cups and the next card we have here is the queen of cups as well that's interesting these two combined and the nine of wands in reverse so we're just kind of tired of the situation and we're kind of casting off i think what's making us tired and we're really uh, justifying it in our mind 
Like the Knight of Cups is often all really focused on their own emotions. I say that quite often, but that's just kind of what this card tends to inspire. And so they have a lot of bells and whistles as well to keep themselves occupied. The horse is just trudging along and the rider is not really giving it any direction. So that's kind of what the horse is doing. Just doing its own thing while the rider focuses on their own emotions. The Queen of Cups is very much aware of their emotions and they're also kind of selfish. They can be a little manipulative. Could be that they're just like uh, doing whatever it is that they want. They don't really care too much about what other people might feel about that. And the fact that they're tired of carrying a burden is probably the entire motivating factor in that. That they just kind of like go, well, I am allowed to do this or I need to do this because I'm just so tired and I need this break and nobody's going to take it from me and I'm just going to do my own thing. I'll explain it later, that type of thing. Like, oh, right now I just need to take care of myself and uh, we'll have a laugh at, the, at this later down the line. It'll be okay, that type of thing. So this is her probably on her way. Now let's see what happens next. Like I think, oops, she's already left this point. All right, first card that we have here is a Three of Swords on its side. Then we have a couple of cards here on the side. I'm just gonna grab this and put that over here. We have two more that are flipped. Let's start with these two, because these are the first ones that we actually got to see. Three of Swords on its side. Three of Swords is a little bit of a Three is a Crowd type of card. And the Nine of Wands is back. We have two Nine of Wands that are both in reverse. So maybe she's also feeling like she wants to cut uh, some cords with some people as well because the Three of Swords is often a bit of a Three is a Crowd. Like I said, like there might be a couple people there that she is involved with, like not romantically, but just like emotionally, there is some type of connection that she may not want to uh, carry with her, I suppose, something that is quite dramatic as well. Um, this still feels like the walking away, so I don't think this is somebody who she's encountering at that time. So this is more her motivating again to leave and not go back just yet. Then we have these two, the Emperor. All right, somebody is uh, some type of influence on her. And the Queen of Swords is in reverse. So the Queen of Swords that we had earlier was making great, uh, or at least uh, logical decisions. And now we have the Queen of Swords back, but the Queen of Swords is in reverse. So perhaps now making decisions that are not very well thought out. And then we have this Emperor in the background looking a little bit grim. And perhaps this is somebody whom she is looking to follow. It could be that she headed out trying to find somebody to follow or something along those lines. Uh, maybe somebody like a guru or something because we did get the Hierophant earlier as well, which might have tried to follow over here. So maybe this Queen of Swords, uh, which is called the Painter in this case, so somebody who is also fairly artistic uh, and has a bit of a spiritual side to them as well, sees this emperor person or somebody whom she perceives as an emperor person in her life and goes i need to make everything work so i can go and hang out with them and they're going to tell me what to do and they're going to give me something to follow something like that because the emperor in this case is standing on a desk as some type of politician or lawmaker or somebody whom has some type of sway over a crowd actually has that julius caesar type uh what's that called again, a uh, garland or something behind her head, like they are anointed, that type of person. So she may be looking for somebody or maybe has a, her eye on somebody who can fill that type of position. In any case, uh, the Queen of Swords is once again back to making quick decisions here, but maybe not the best ones. Then we have the Seven of Pentacles. This card is called Failure. Now, normally the Seven of Pentacles is a little bit brighter because you see uh, stuff growing on the vine. You're harvesting the things that you've sown, or at least you're about to harvest them. And you're just kind of looking over your crops to see what's what. And this card says Failure. So this is not a positive uh, type of harvesting that we're having here. Maybe this is something that is getting in the way of what it is that she thought her plans would lead to, so maybe she thought things were going to go much better than they actually ended up going. Now this does 
like uh, include things like oh I thought that a tank of gas would get me further than this or I thought that it would be easier to find a motel room or something along those lines so this could also just be small conveniences that made her kind of reconsider her plans uh, like things were not as easy or as romantic as maybe she had imagined uh, reading things from her favorite authors who did things like that because I'm pretty sure that people who write about those types of spiritual journeys will have a way of making it seem very attractive and then you're confronted with the reality and I think that's what this is. We have death in reverse here. We're unable to let something go. Could be that even though she was seeing some adversaries uh, or some type of adversity over there, or maybe adversaries as well, that she decided, okay, well, no matter what, I'm going to keep going because this is the path I've chosen. We're going to go and go through with it. And we're going to take a little step back over here and maybe reconsider things. And this card, this Four of Swords, is also called Truce. So this may just be a, I'm not giving up, but I'm going to take a moment to think about my uh, situation here and then we'll continue later down the line. I think that's what's going on here. Then we have these four. All right, we have here the Prince of Discs, which is basically the Knight of Pentacles in reverse though. So we are plotting things and the Knight of Pentacles tends to plot along as well, very uh, slowly but surely. Knight of Pentacles is also often very material world uh, minded. Their focus is on uh, getting the best out of uh, the work that they're putting in. And so maybe she is trying her best to be kind of practical and to get most out of what it is that she is doing. And then we have here the Knight of Swords, which is the King of Swords effectively in this deck. And this one is called the Game Master. Uh, she's making plans possibly and they're not really panning out. Could also be that she's encountering a game master who may be a step ahead of what she's doing. Uh, they may have plans that she is not aware of. Uh, we have here the Six of Cups. There may be a call to some type of a melancholy here, some type of past situation. Maybe somebody is able to manipulate her in this state by calling upon things that will sound familiar to her and will make them uh, more likely to be uh, trusting of this person. We have the Prince of Cups, which is the Knight of Cups in this deck, and it's in reverse. Also called the Filmmaker, so somebody who normally uh, cuts the scene, so to speak, is now either doing the wrong thing or somebody is doing the scene making for them because you can actually see a second set of hands right at the frame of the camera, so to speak. So the Filmmaker is being filmed in this case. Could be that uh, she has met her match in that regard, that somebody else has uh, even more selfish emotions and is a step ahead of where she's at. That makes her easier to control and manipulate possibly by them. So maybe she's encountered somebody at this point who has uh, other intentions that perhaps she is not yet aware of. Uh, she's thinking that she's being very practical. So it could be that she took this break here and then she met this person who's like, oh, I can help you with that. Oh yeah, that author, I know all about them and I know exactly what he meant and I can show you a few places that will really help you along. Like that type of thing might be happening over here. So let's see what happens next. All right, Ten of Wands in reverse. Once again, we are carrying a burden. We're not able to let it go though. So maybe the weariness that she started off with that she was trying to run away from is still with her and she is unable to shake that or things are being added to it perhaps. Oops, that one almost flew off the table but landed just on the edge. Then we have temperance in reverse or so we're unable to temper ourselves. Uh, I guess we're not able to see the forest for the trees because of this weariness over here building up. She may just be really tired of something and that makes her more likely to agree with things or more likely to disagree with things and just kind of her temper flaring a bit. Maybe she's making rash decisions now because of this because she's just kind of trying to get out of things. All right, so we're having an internal argument here as well with the Five of Swords in reverse. 
and uh, maybe whomever it is that she encountered or people that she is encountering she is having some issues with but I think this is mostly her fighting with herself so this may be a lot of self-doubt going on at the time like maybe she feels like this person that she may have met don't know is doing the right thing but at the same time there's also this nagging voice in the back of the head that's going i don't know if you can trust this guy he seems a little weird and it's kind of coincidental that he just happens to know these places like there may be that back and forth going on inside of her mind at this point oh that one landed over here all right, Eight of Swords in reverse. So it is a bit of a mind trap that she's definitely able to step out of, but maybe she's willfully staying with the course. Like there is a part of her, like I said, that's kind of arguing back and forth, but also I think she may be aware that the things that she's telling herself aren't quite true, but there's some part of her that wants to keep believing it because it's more convenient that way like uh, suspending disbelief, that type of thing. Just kind of like going with the flow because maybe there's something on the other end that she wants or some type of uh, castle there in the background that is promised if she just goes along with it. Or maybe she thinks that she is smarter than people around her and she can get something out of it while pretending that she's on board with something. Like maybe she found some type of group that she wanted to hang out with for her own reasons but then she decided uh to kind of keep mentally back from them a bit more like try to uh pretend to be on board with whatever it is that they're promising and it's quite telling that we're now pulling the ten of cups which is definitely a lot of oh wow happiness that type of thing which is something that you tend to have when you first join like a commune or something. There's a phase where everything is super lovely and everybody's very nice to you because they want you to stay. Uh, that type of thing might be happening at this point. Like she knows that possibly this group that she may or may not have joined has certain beliefs that she's not super on board with, but she wants the companionship or she wants the experience. Something like that. Let's see. What else can we get here? Whoops, okay. Those two kind of rejected each other. Here we have the Page of Cups in reverse. So there is a negative surprise, but it's not entirely unexpected. Uh, There's definitely some tumultuous situations happening here. And then we have the Ace of Pentacles. All right, so maybe... If we are still here with the commune, then this may be the part where they're like, oh yeah, well now you're going to have to get rid of all of your possessions, like that type of thing. Uh, she probably knew it was going to come or suspected that it was going to come, but it's still like a, huh, we now have this thing going on because your uh, resources will all be in the afterlife, that type of thing. Uh, like there's this big pie in the sky idea that they're having her sign up for. That's kind of what this seems to be pointing towards. If she really is with that type of group and to be fair she did leave everything behind in the car so even if uh she wanted to keep things she just kind of left everything in the car and then had the car run down the hill don't know if she did that herself but uh that's what happened oh there's one that fell down here oh there's two that fell down here and we have a little bit of falling out here with the three of cups in reverse and also the sun going down all right so maybe they asked her to give up all of her worldly possessions and she's just kind of like i don't know if i really want to do that but then we have this uh almost like a rejection thing going on here which she may not have been on board with ultimately either or this could be the alternative like okay give up all your stuff and if you don't that means you're not really a part of us and uh, therefore we'll have to say goodbye and all this happy stuff that we had over here yeah you know you're not going to be a part of that anymore because you didn't want to join us like that type of thing might be happening whoops oh there's a lot of cards right now a small stack fell over here starting with 
the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. All right, so Queen of Pentacles uh, in reverse tries to balance things, but cannot for some reason. So it could be that she tries to argue with them and says, yeah, maybe it's a good idea if I just keep things so I can occasionally help out with stuff and stuff like that. But this uh, may not work out because ultimately the Queen of uh, Pentacles, when it's in reverse, tries to keep all the plates spinning and fails to do so and then we have here a king of swords in reverse so this might be the person that she's arguing with who is possibly a little sharper than her and able to cut down all of her arguments which is why she probably ends up not being able to win that argument we have again uh no this is the two of ones not the three of ones but similar we're not able to go anywhere, but we do have new things on the horizon here. So new initiatives being uh, taken. Again, with the castle in the background. So there may really be some type of promise that uh, she is going to be part of some big thing. And we see this person looking for ways uh, to go or like places to go on this globe here while they're standing on a castle wall. So maybe looking over the edge of the castle wall and uh, wishing that they could go somewhere but not having any options to travel like that type of thing so she may be kept in that location all right so it does look or sound like she went somewhere and was unable to leave them for whatever reason because of some type of uh demands that were made of her that she had to ultimately sign up for now um are we ever going to find out what happened to her uh let's see if we can get any cards about that there's you this is the page of pentacles in uh upright actually i was going to say in reverse but no it's upright it's called the kindergarten teacher so this is uh somebody who is a little careless with their spending could also be careless with their time maybe just kind of doing her thing it could be it kind of looks like they just kind of settled in like maybe after all of this they kind of just let, let it happen and they just try to make the best of it that type of vibe is what i'm getting from this card over here okay Six of Swords, kinda on its side. Six of Swords is uh, basically being led somewhere. Could be that she's partially being led somewhere and partially volunteering to go places. Like maybe uh, I could see this being going with people to certain locations to do their bidding and then uh, just kind of agreeing with that, just kind of going along with it and then we have here the eight of uh pentacles so we're really focused on our work here uh working very hard on something and i guess keeping our head down quite literally possibly also specializing in something like maybe they have a specific role or they had a specific role oh, that one jumped so it's the ace of pentacles on its side so working on things that from some point of view may seem important but may not be from another point of view like this is atlas holding up the globe but uh from some perspectives it may seem like a great work that needs to be done and other people might look upon it and go well that's crazy why would you do such a thing so she may not be entirely on board with whatever it is that she is working on at that point but i asked if we're ever going to find out anything about what happened to her and we might do because of all this work that she's doing. All right, so now we have here the Journalist or the Prince of Wands, which in this deck is the Knight of Wands. So somebody might be taking some action here and some rash action. Now this is called the Journalist, but it could easily be a, a YouTuber or some other type of person who has a lot of sway in the public eye. Or somebody who is just really passionate about their law enforcement job or their detective job somebody who really likes to go out there and possibly has picked up this case and thought you know what i'm gonna solve this once and for all they look like they're gonna put a lot of energy into it possibly also questioning people because of the microphone there and maybe they'll get to talking to the right people who can maybe help them with this case 
Okay. Three of Pentacles in reverse. So we are finding some uh, people working against us in this case. So there might be somebody who is pretty enthusiastic about this case and they're going to encounter some opposition. Maybe people don't want to work with them. Uh, possibly uh, people who work with others who are kind of connected to this case and don't want everything to come out. I don't know. Okay, but initially their uh, energy is not going to give them much results. Then we have here the Knight of Discs, which is basically the King of Pentacles. All right, so we have somebody who is very practical. So there may be somebody opposing this journalist character who is very wealthy, resourceful, or knowledgeable on the case, has some type of high standing somewhere, knows exactly how to play his pawns in this game of chess. So they're up against quite an adversary who is trying to keep things uh, on the down low. And, oh, this one also wanted to flip. We have, let's see, Dominion over here, the Two of Wands. Okay, so the Two of Wands again is trying to make plans for some type of trip. And uh, it has a little bit of a chariot vibe with the actual chariot on that statue over there in the background. But it is a statue, so statues don't tend to move very quickly. And so maybe whatever plans you're making are being uh, slowed down. Possibly they are getting a lot of word out though with this Ace of Swords. It kind of wanted to slide onto its side when I actually placed it on the table. But there may be some traveling as well, because I do see an airplane up there in the sky. And quite, well, the, uh, the arc in the background looks like a place from France, Arc de Triomphe, I think. In any case, there's a lot of words and a lot of thoughts uh, being put into this. So even though they may be finding some pushback from this Knight of Discs over here, uh, they may uh, actually just be motivated more to do stuff because of all the pushback. Like almost like uh, I need to go where people are pushing the hardest because that's where I'm going to find the most information, that type of thing. So this person does seem like a very stubborn type that would probably look for things like that. Like where the people are the most resistant, that's where I need to be. So I'm guessing that's what the initiative is about. A card jumped, but I don't know if it flipped. So we gotta check real quick. No, it didn't, okay. Okay, right, we have three now. The Four of Resources. Okay, so Four of Pentacles in reverse. They're not spending the resources very well. We have here the Princess or Page of Swords. So we may also be kicking people's shins by speaking things a little too harshly, a little too quickly. That might not make people very happy to see this person. And then we have the Five of Pentacles in reverse. So normally the Five of Pentacles would be like a bankruptcy type of thing. They may be losing some steam here. Like maybe there is some, um, there's too much pushback possibly. They may be down in the dumps, but also this reminds me of that mummified person that they found with the, uh, the bar in the femur bone. So maybe they're trying to push that more and they're not getting very far with that either. So maybe uh, that's something that is going to rub people the wrong way. And slowing things down. Now let's see if we can get a few final cards about this case. And then we're going to have to call it a day. Oops. All right, that one. We have the Two of Cups. Okay, so we might find some support ultimately. Or somebody is going to push them into a certain mindset. Because that is also a Two of Cups type of card. Like maybe they can convince certain people or they will be convinced of something by some other people to possibly calm down and uh, go bark up another tree or something. But let's see, ooh, we got three cards here. Let's see what we've got now. 
All right, so this is devil card in reverse. So we are uh, setting ourselves free from some type of uh, bondage as well. Maybe something that people were connected to that's being let go of. It could be that they are convincing people to let go of these bonds that weren't serving them anymore. Uh, the Nine of Cups, though, is somebody who is dissatisfied. So maybe they need to go talk to somebody who is dissatisfied with their current uh, situation. And they will then uh, let go of some bonds to talk more freely. And then on the end here, we have uh, the Lovers in Reverse. And I kind of see this as whoever this person is, they may be starting a new bond over here, possibly with the journalist and letting go of an old bond over here on this side that was really like negative for them. So maybe they can actually get somebody to talk because they're dissatisfied with their current situation. And this journalist person might be able to bring that to light and then uh, have them actually see the light and start talking. So hopefully that's something that'll happen. In any case, it looks like this journalist has their work cut out for them. And that is what I'm seeing for Leah Roberts. I hope you found that interesting. Make sure to leave a comment and a like. That really helps the channel along. If you want to subscribe, that's even better. Very much appreciated. We're on our way to 1500. I hope to see you in another video. Thanks for watching and bye-bye for now.